Well, the series Lodge Talk, uh, by definition, has to deal with counselors, the chief, politics, negotiations, and so, Margaret Nelson, member of council, welcome to Lodge Talk. That's I can't, for I can't me. welcome you to the lodge because it's your lodge. That's right. <laughs> well, welcome to Lodge Talk. Tell me um, your first memories. Just gr growing up, uh, where were you? St. Andrews, I think. St. Andrews. What was it like? Yeah, my, I was brought up and raised in St. Andrews. My, uh, I've always been there rest all my life. The chief, Hugh, and I, we used to hang around together and stuff, and we used to have gatherings every, like, every now and again, we'd go down on the point, and we used to, um, the family, his mother and my mother, we used to go down there and we used to go down and have clams on the beach. They used to get lobsters on the beach down there and we used to cook them on the beach like every Saturday or a Sunday when we all get together down there and that was a good memory that I remember and down roughly there. Roughly what year was that? Uh, without, I was about uh, seven or eight years old so I would say in the 50s. Well, I was going to say without disclosing your age, but now you've <laughs> kind of done it. Yeah. Um, now, it's interesting. I, I, th I think I know some of those stories, and you refer to the point. Um, many people re refer to it as Indian Point. Indian Point. point. Now, what's, what's your view of the use of that term? Because it is controversial. It's just all I knew that what it was was just called Indian Point, and that's down where the chief lived, down around that area. These days, some people find political incorrectness wherever they can, and sometimes very rightly so. Um, I've always viewed the term Indian as an example of people who came here and didn't know where they were. They were lost. Yeah. Um, and the Lachine Rapids outside of Montreal has nothing to do with China. It's a long, <laughs> long way from China. Um, do, you, do you find it an offensive term? It's also a legal term, you know. Uh, yeah, the Indian I Act. don't find offensive. Well, I'm proud to, to be a native and Indian, so it's just like when I grew up in St. Andrews, my mother always told me I wasn't supposed to speak of me being native because mm -hmm. back in that time in the 60s, that's when they were taking the kids away from the, from the parents, and my mother always said never tell anybody that you're native because she was afraid they were going to take me. It must have been monumentally scary. Yeah, I didn't understand. Like, I didn't understand at that point why was I not allowed to say that I was Native. I was proud to be, but they, I wasn't supposed to speak of it. I mean, that, that's really a shocker for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I assume that some people, uh, certainly not all, but some people must have thought they were trying to do the, the right thing and then did stupid and wrong things mm -hmm. with uh, Indigenous people. But to uh, scare children like that, uh, even inadvertently, is a real shame. Yeah. Now let's get back to the point. The clam beds there are a really interesting thing mm -hmm. that uh, negotiator Paul Williams I is going to be dealing with. And the question is, who owns the hard surface land type thing? that is underneath water most of the time when the tide is in, mm -hmm. and when the tide goes out, it's firm enough to walk on. That, that's going to be a very interesting case, because yes. there is, is a case on the West Coast where it is the indigenous people who own that uh, land, because they've been harvesting yep. clams there forever. For a long time, yeah. And I don't know why they can't, you know, get that straightened so that they stop the digging down in there. Well, um, I, I suppose it's because it involves a lot of government and a lot of law, yes, yes. but I, I think it will be straightened out. Now, when I was a, a, a boy, we used to stomp on the uh, sandy beach uh, and look for a little jet of water coming yeah. up, and that told you a clam was underneath. Is that what you did? Yeah. And how would you then get the clam out? They just take a clam hole and dig down in and bring them up. Some use a shovel, some use some a, a, a rake, yeah. some use a, a, a bent up pitchfork type of thing yeah and in some jurisdictions some of those tools are illegal um, and then there's mechanical harvesting what can you tell us about uh, that I never heard really never heard tell of the mechanical because that's going to have a serious impact on the I environment guess. Yeah. yeah then do you have other memories of of the clams and the and the lobster uh, at that beach must have been fantastic well yeah because um, 
When the tide goes out, the family used to go down. See, I was young, but I didn't do it, but I watched everybody else do it. And they used to take and put a, a, a hook, a spike or something on the end of a long pole, and then they'd go down to low tide as you would go, and then you would stick the pole into the rock where the seaweed was, then the uh, lobster would clab a hold of the of the thing and you pull the pull the lobster out of the rock. I I've, I've never heard of this. Lobsters were hiding in the seaweed? <coughs> yeah, in the seaweed. I'd never heard of that. Yeah. Interesting. And they used and to poke poke them in there and then pull them out. And uh, they grabbed onto it and yep. uh, it was not really in their best interest to grab no, onto it, but no, that's what no. happened. Now my father and grandfather were in Nova Scotia. Uh not too far from here, northern Nova Scotia. And they always said um, that lobster was for the poor kids, that they always wanted to take uh, roast beef sandwiches to, mm -hmm. to school for, for lunch. Was that your experience too? Well, if you take the, yeah, because it was it was free, you know, but I mean it was like uh, some people felt kind of didn't want to take lobster for sandwiches to school. And now it's a it, delicacy. It's, it's a delicacy. And the best restaurants in the world say, we have Nova Scotia lobster yeah. on, the, on the menu, you know, as if it was uh, uh, such a special event. Yes. Funny how yeah. things change. Yeah, some people felt foolish taking lobsters to sandwiches. Now, when, when you're not being a politician, what did your career and life entail? My career was um, always a, a cook. I was uh, working in the restaurants or in the school doing uh, different things, you know, feeding the kids and that's what I did all my life. Did you cook any lobsters or clams? Pardon? Did you cook any lobsters or clams? No. Then how did you get involved in politics, in the nation politics? With the nation here? Uh, well, I, I, I just stumbled into it because I, I knew Huey, but when we had um, that thing out in Old Ridge there back in 1999 or 98, they decided they wanted to get going and start getting the chief and councils, so it was just a spur of the moment thing. So I was told the night before that I'd be at this meeting at the hall, and then all of a sudden it was just everybody was voting everybody in, and I, I nominated the Hugh to to be chief. I nominated him, and the next thing I knew, I was on the council and Rita, and we were all. It was just all going it went so quick. And here it is 21, 22 years later, and here we are still at it. So you got into it by popular demand. Yeah. Well, that's a good yeah. way to get into yeah. politics. Um, the last time you and I uh, were sitting, uh, not quite this close, but almost, was Ottawa. Very emotional time. Um, more for you than for me, of course, because you're much closer to all this. But when the artifacts that were in this lodge were displayed, uh, preserved, uh, tidied up, what went through your mind? What was that event like for you? It was very emotional. Um, I could feel the energy that was in that room. I know that, I know they were there. My ancestors were there. I could feel it. And it was very, I was really overwhelmed. Because I've never been out here. The first time I ever come out here was, gosh, when we first got the, when we first got the lodge. And when I walked out in here, it was, I felt like I was home. I, I knew that this is home. In a way, it must have been very gratifying, as you say. Yes. Your home. But in, in another way, strange that this uh, American family who used this as uh, what they used to call the grand cottages, like FDR's mm -hmm. Campobello and, and uh, St. Andrews and what have you, that this American family somehow had an affinity for the, uh, the culture and uh, the nation and your relatives and ancestors mm -hmm. and preserved all this. I mean, it must That's have been strange. Um, yes, and I never even knew this place existed. And I mean happy strange. Yes, not, you know, yes, yeah. Then you're seeing your ancestors uh, work mm -hmm. and uh, hobbies and livelihood in a plexiglass container <laughs> in a museum uh, in a climate controlled mm -hmm. uh, and with a plaque on it explaining it. Wow. I mean, that's really something. Yes, very much. Pretty awesome. Now, 
you've been on council for a long time and you say you were kind of drafted or it was yeah. popular demand. Uh, what would you like to point to um, as the, the role of a counselor? You know, how do, how, what do you feel that you're supposed to do for everybody? I was just, uh, I'm learning. I'm just learning every day. It's just we have to vote on things. We have to discuss them and, you know, we just see what's got to be done. And I'm, I'm still learning. Even though I've been at it 21 years, I'm still learning. But you're more polite than the politicians we see on TV in question period. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's good. And wh what would you like to say if you had to point to a couple of things you're really happy you got done or proud that you accomplished? What would they be? Know what I got accomplished today, I guess, and follow every, you know, to help the chief and to help guide him what he's got to go to. So, and he guides us at the same time. And what do you think the next few years hold? Do you, do you have any benchmarks or, or goals, uh, hopes that you uh, can, can share, or, or is it too I'd, hard to predict? Uh, it's kind of hard to predict, but I'd like to see something in the next couple of years to get the recognition and help the next generation that's coming in behind us. I may not see it, but at least I'm starting that, getting it going, and knowing that I'm hoping that it'll help along the line. Have you seen the artifacts in the, the Van Horn gigantic cottage on Minister's Island? I haven't. S I've been over there a few times, but I've never never seen the artifacts. And how do you feel about that? Because, there, you know, people have mixed emotions about these things. Uh, they're at least preserved, like they were here, but um, the ownership of the island is in at least a bit of doubt. You know, how much of it did he own? How much did, did the province really own it all? There was a, there were some Americans who owned it. There was, of course, Minister Andrews, yes. loyalists, and before all that, <laughs> your ancestors uh, for, for 10,000, 13,000 years. So uh, how do you feel about that? It's kind of a confusing That's issue. Yeah, it? it's, um, it should, it, it's ours, really, and that's how I feel about it. But I know it, it was taken away from us, so you know it's, it should come back to us. It might. And I hope so. Yeah. Now, at the end of uh, interviews, what uh, broadcasters who didn't do all their homework say is, is there anything you'd like to add? Um, I can't know what would have been you know, the right thing to talk about for sure, but is there anything you'd like to add or talk about? Mm, no, I think I pretty well everything. and. Like I said, I don't have a much of a remember growing up and stuff. It's just it's just hanging around with Huey growing up. So. Well, this is a fantastic historical, cultural uh, place, uh, and I appreciate being able to come here on occasion and, and talk to you and experience yeah. uh, a little bit of what you're experiencing. Thank you. Thank you very much.